we're doing this and it's about 8 30 in the morning and we get some good intel and you know we get with Karzai and we get a good decision from him and we start um, we start our operations up well we had a very very good process for uh, clearing our fires we had a great STS uh, guy on the ground and we have absolutely no errors and we <coughs> we needed to build up our force structure going into Af going into Kandahar so we took this point we took this point in time to bring in some additional uh, augmentees right and <coughs> it was about 24 hours before this had happened so what we did was we um, we did a good transition with everybody. We had a TAC P come in and he did a good transition with the STS and learned all the SOPs and everything like that. And our STS guy and the TAC P had uh, changed over. So just so everyone knows, these these are the guys that call for fire from the air. That's that, who we're absolutely. talking about. And the TAC P and the STS, these are individuals that are trained. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. It's I mean, obviously, it's a really hard job. One mistake can be deadly, and that's what they're focused on, and it's great to have those guys because that's what they do for a living. Right. And so you had a transition taking place where you're going from one guy that had been with you, now your your force is growing, you got some extra guys that are going to be able to help out, but they're just showing up, mm -hmm. so they're not quite up to, up to speed yet. That's correct. That's correct. And um, And so... They did their transition. We had got <clears throat> mail in for the first time. So guys were, you know, guys that weren't directly involved in doing anything were opening up their mail. And, you know, um, <clears throat> I had done a walk around our, our uh, defensive area, which was an old Soviet um, uh, mortar pit, right, up on the high ground. And I had walked around, and I had gone down the hill, <laughs> just got to the bottom of the hill um, and this big explosion right out of nowhere and um, I don't know how much time had passed to be honest with you but I picked myself up off the ground I had pieces of body parts stuff all over me blood all over me I'm doing a quick assessment of myself I got a real bad injury with my leg um, and, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, dazed, looking around, and it is utter mayhem. We got Afghans down, we got Americans down, we got rounds cooking off, we got RPGs cooking off, it's going all over the place. Um, I start walking around, I start grabbing our guys. <clears throat> We go down to where Karzai was, and we made sure he was okay, and he was with his uh, CIA guys, and they had secured him. Um, and the guys that were with him, securing him, I asked them if they would go out and recon a safe place to bring in helicopters, because I knew we were going to have to cast a vac here. Um, and out 200 meters, we had casualties, right? Um, it, was, it was a mess. All 20 of the U.S. guys on the ground were injured some way or another, some more than others. Um, and <clears throat> we had, um, I designated a uh, casualty control point, and I got with my comms guys, and we had to find some, uh, we had to kind of like um, take comms equipment from, you know, cannibalize it from mm -hmm. other stuff to make to reestablish com communications with higher headquarters. I found Colonel Fox, and he was, he was dazed and confused uh, just to the point where he was just not coherent about what was going on, so made sure that he was <clears throat> taken care of. Um, and went up on the hill, and we started pulling bodies off, right, with all these rounds cooking off and everything, like getting, getting guys off the top of the hill, getting them down. And we knew we had uh, to get um, complete accountability of everybody. And we did that, and I was missing one, right? Uh, and went back up on the hill 
to where his position was, and that was ground zero of the impact of the 2,000-pound bomb from a B-52 up 35,000 feet. And I searched everywhere, and I found his hat, and I took his hat, and I started picking up bits and pieces, and I put it inside the hat, and I put the hat inside a bag, and I marked it, uh, and that's how he was identified. But there was nothing to send home, absolutely nothing to send home. And another one of our guys that was killed was completely torn in half. I found him under a vehicle. His chest was still heaving. His legs were over here. His chest, his body was separated from it. Um, and I start doing CPR on him. And someone finally grabs me on the shoulder and goes, Sir, no, that's not going to work. He's torn in half. <sighs> so, anyways, we get him in a, in a body bag and we get him off there. And then we had one guy that was not going to make it but was um, still alive. And we kept him alive and we got him evac'd when the when we had coordinated the evac, we got a B team, special forces company, and, a, and an ODA to come in to backfill. Um, that came in from higher headquarters. We got all the guys out, uh, and, <clears throat> and then we started doing the uh, the after action and regrouping because we still had. This was five December. We still had to go and take Kandahar. Mm. So me, um, my assistant S3, the battalion commander, and a combo guy, despite our injuries, we stayed on the ground in order to be able to coordinate the push to Kandahar. So we did that. We regrouped. We got as many Afghans out as we possibly could that were injured. Um, <clears throat> that wasn't something that Hire wanted to do, but we talked him into doing it because it was the right thing to do. Mm. So we got our Afghan partners evac'd out. Uh, we helped with the casualties for them as well in the village, and everybody came out and, and, and helped from the different areas around the village. Um, and um, we just said, screw it. We're going we're gonna to hit that. Um, we're going to hit that bridge. And we're going to hit that uh, pass, and we're going to knock them out of there. And we went through, nobody was there, <laughs> right? This was 8 December, and we went right into Kandahar, and we took Kandahar. And the after action on that, though, uh, I, and I blame myself to this day, the transition between the STS and the TAC-P was really good, but the TAC-P had to change batteries, and, and those old soft lambs, that we use to target designate. When you do that, the grid resets to your position. So before you send anything or confirm anything with the aircraft, you've got to make sure that, that you have your grid system squared away. And that was the mistake that was made. And <clears throat> as I go over this in my mind over and over and over again, even to this day, I think to myself, I should have been there to make sure that th that I should have got an in-person briefing from the TAC-P that he knew all those procedures. I should have got that, and I didn't get that. And because I didn't get it, and because of we were in combat, and because of all the things that you talked about earlier, um, you know, a mistake was made. And I... I was in charge of those operations on behalf of Colonel Fox. That was my job, and I didn't do my job, in my opinion, to the best of my ability, and we had that event occur. Uh, and, you know, well, I learned a big lesson, uh, and I'm sure a lot of people learned a big lesson, but at the end of the day, um, <clears throat> it, um, you know, there's a, and I think you talk about it, and, you know, in your, in your book there, Extreme Ownership, the fog of war, mm. right? And Clausewitz and his explanation of the fog of war, and I mean, it's all there, right? And 
you do what you can do. In some cases, you can only do so much. There's a lot of things going on. But in retrospect, it becomes clearer. And as you say, you got to take extreme ownership, right? Not only on those things that go well, but most importantly, on those things that don't go well. At what point did you realize it was a, a friendly bomb? Well, it wasn't until um, I was talking to the TACP, who was seriously injured, and he was apologizing. And he said, I, sir, I made a mistake. I don't think that I, I cleared that grid like I was supposed to do. And I said, hey, listen, mistakes happen. These things happen. Mm -hmm. Please, you need, to f you need to focus on keeping yourself. I mean, he was seriously injured. You need to focus on keeping yourself alive so you can get home to your family. These things happen. 